So today, March 31st, 2024, marks five years since rapper, Grammy nominated rapper, let me make sure I get that out there, Grammy nominated rapper, uh, Nipsey Hussle was, was murdered outside of his own clothing store. Um, before I even get into my opinions about a lot of different things, uh, how many people in this chat are fans of Nipsey Hussle? They know who Nipsey Hussle is, whether it be by his business ventures, his motivational speaks, or simply his rap music. So drop a one if you're a fan of Nipsey Hussle. Drop a two if you are familiar with who the man is. Drop a three if you don't know who the hell I'm talking about. All right. Because I just want to check the temperature in the room before I start uh, giving my comments. And definitely make sure that you smash the like button, man. We got 131 live viewers um, on a Sunday, on an Easter Sunday. I can't thank you all enough for spending time with me. Y'all know, like, this podcast, I think, is tough for me. I'm just trying to get better with each episode. But I felt like one of the, one of the reasons I really, really wanted to record today was I wanted to pay tribute to somebody that I feel like is a cultural icon. Somebody that um, wasn't perfect, but put a lot of positive out into the world. And, you know, words of affirmation to me is the best love language of it all, of all of them, because words of affirmation is a simple way to spread love. You hear me say all the time, man, spread love and being great. And what people don't realize is you can spread love to total strangers just by giving them a solid piece of advice, just by giving them a compliment, like just small gestures that you don't even realize, like, damn, I'm really out here spreading love to somebody. I'll make an impact in somebody else's life. And I felt like that's who Nipsey Hussle was. And it was unfortunate that he really didn't get the roses and the flowers that he earned you know, while he was alive. But I don't think anybody is upset that his name rang out and continues to ring out the way it did after his passing. See, when you're somebody like that, man, your death is never in vain. Because there were millions of Black people that were impacted and did positive things after his passing. Hell, there were even millions of, of, of white people and people of other races that that realized that I can see past the, the braids, the tattoos, the jewelry, the, just the whole urban vibe and say, okay, this is an intelligent man. And even I can learn something from him. And then they did things with the, uh, the information that he put out. What Nipsey Hussle meant to the black community to me, man, was everything. Because after he passed away, even locally in the city of Cleveland, and I tried it myself, you start seeing people that had all these business ideas, actually stepping out there and making an attempt to start a business, to sustain a business and do something different, right? You know, people on social media were cracking joke that we were living in an area to era to where everybody all of a sudden was an acquiring or acquiring a LLC. And, you know, people will make their little jokes about it. Yeah, you got your little LLC. Anybody can do that. But for me, it felt good to see people not take that hundred dollars. So I can't even remember how much it cost and go buy a shirt or put that towards a pair of shoes. But to actually put that towards a piece of paper that can start a business that can turn into something else that can create generational wealth for you and your family. As a young black man that come from the hood, it was pretty exciting to see people do that. Right. You start seeing people who would normally go to Walgreens or Rite Aid when they had a cold to go get, you know, the, the cough syrup or whatever medicine was out there. But then he started telling you and teaching you about Dr. Sabi. Then he starts t telling and teaching about organic health and how your body heals itself. And if you put these things in your body versus those things in your body, how would it have a better uh, immediate and long-term income, uh, outcome, I'm sorry. Then you look around and you see everybody now is, you know, more on that health kick, you know, uh, organic supplements. Like there's there's not a place that you can go now to where people is not really like consuming CMOS. Right. Like there's just so many different things that Nipsey Hussle brought to the table that you see out here in the world today. And Tupac used to always talk about that. 
you know, he might not be the change or, or live to see the change, but he guaranteed that he would spark the brain that would change the world. If I'm being honest with myself, I think Nipsey Hussle did that more than Tupac did. Because everything about Nipsey Hussle to me was a positive vibe. Everything about Nipsey Hussle was about pushing black people forward. It was about family, business, community. Family, business, community. That man was a father first. You know, that, that man was a son. He was somebody who loved his grandmother. Like, he was somebody who loved this woman. And even though he didn't have a marriage license or anything like that, you couldn't tell nobody that Lauren London wasn't his wife. And he treated her like the queen that she, that she is. He showed her the loyalty, love, and respect that most of us men wish we was mature enough and disciplined enough to be able to put on display on a consistent basis. He showed you about how to take your own money and start your own businesses. He told you about like, hey, you got to like you got to slow walk this thing. Everything about Nipsey Hussle was the marathon. Right. Everything. His whole his whole niche was, hey, this thing is a marathon. And you would see him always make moves to where. He was putting himself and his family in a position to where they owned everything that they could. You know, you talk about community, and here's the unfortunate part about community. Nipsey Hussle was killed in a, his own community that he was trying to build up and give back to. And that's tragic. Like, I really wish I could say what I really want to say, man, but that's that's like really, really messed up. And that hurts my soul every time I think about it. But when I think about Nipsey Hussle, when I think about his life, when I think about his legacy, man, I'm really, really able to smile because... You know, legends don't die. In fact, he has a song. I can't remember the lyric verbatim, but what he says, you know, legend, while I'm here, take a pic, please. You know, you know, legends die young, rest of peace, pimp, and somebody else. But when you really are a legend, you live forever long after you're dead and gone by the work that you put out here, right? By the love that you spread. And I felt like that he spread a lot of love through his words. You know, when he would do interviews, he was he would talk all the time about the only difference between him and everybody else is he never quit. He would talk about, you know, the best way to sell yourself is just to be authentic, to be who you are. And those are lessons that I try to apply to myself every single time I, I jump on this platform and I talk to y'all. I pride myself in being in this game and I feel like I'm one on one. I'm a young black man from the inner city. I got a body, body full of tattoos. I got earrings. I got a nose ring. I got locks in my head. And I am on a professional platform delivering sports, living out my dream to where when I look across the landscape, at least here in Northeast Ohio, even the people that's black, they don't come from where I come from. They don't look like I look. They don't talk how I talk. They don't hang in the areas that I hang in. And I'm here. And I felt like I'm here because I never tried to be nobody but Earl. I was only interested in being myself and being the best version of myself and make sure that every time that I step, I'm being authentic. And even if it rubs some people the wrong way, even if it might not open up every single door for me, I know that if I just keep being true to who I am and true to my morals and true to my principles, that the right doors will open up for me and that I will get the opportunity to live out my dream. You know, another Nipsey Hustle line like that I love is what opportunity meet preparation, right? Like another Nipsey Hustle, like on, on the 92.3 The Fan, some of you all know that's where I work. My When I get a chance to host, my, my intro song is Hustle and Motivate. So when I tell you that this is somebody that I really looked at as like a true icon, a teacher, and somebody that has inspired and motivated me and in his own way, man, I think even me saying that doesn't give it justice to how it really made me feel. And so I just wanted to take time out on this March 31st, 2004, the five-year anniversary of his passing, to say, man, long live the great Nipsey Hussle, and thank you for everything that you put out into the world, and to know that people out here are really consuming it, and now they're putting positivity out in the world, and they spreading that type of love to the next generation that's coming up, and your life was never in vain, man, and you're going to live forever because of the work that you did and the things that you put in. So salute to the king, man.